Hello. Good day to everyone. Let me begin with a small, you know, incident. The incident where, you know, many times, you know, product designers, engineers, and of course, the uh, tool designers to the extent have been questioned. What should be the shrinkage value that I should put in the tool so that I get the part very precisely close to the CAD model? I welcome you to today's episode on shrinkage compensation and we are going to discuss and uh, study on it. I try to divide these two, this session into the two parts so that it's, it's easy to understand that. So let's begin with it. So let me start with another part that I want to discuss for the uh, for next three or four minutes. As you can see on your right hand side, we have an okay, CAD geometry. And when it's a, we call it as a design. And you can see that it has a length of like 100 mm. To get that 100 mm, we usually put an uh, expansion. We also call it as an as a shrinkage compensation. Shrinkage compensation, in other words, is expanding the tool. Now, in actual reality, it depends upon the, the geometry, the material, the processing condition, the gate location. So multiple factors are taken into the considerations when we are, when we apply this, you know, uh, expansion or the compensation. For the today's study, I'm going to expand it by 1.75%. So please refer this as very carefully. It's 1.75% and not the 1.75 times, okay? And something that we always refer is a warp shape of the part after the molding, okay? So once we apply the shrinkage, we left out only with the warp in the model. And there is other way to make it simplifier or or the bold uh, step is to get the vintage uh, we also refer as the opposite shape of the part so the if the part in the simulation is buckling inside uh, the vintage geometry would be referred into the opposite direction that is outside like an inside it's warping but the vintage would be like an outside of it so that was pretty much you know very simple uh, you know to simple things to understand before we get started now let's take an example of this design as i mentioned earlier this is a part which is having a length of like 100 mm as you can see i tried measuring with the measurement tool and uh, when we did analysis, uh, and if I try to measure these two points end to end, as I can refer with a round circle over here, uh, you know, it shows that uh, distance before the deformation is 100 mm. That's what we measure in the CAD. But distance after the deformation is 98.25 mm. And it also gives a shrinkage of 1.75% again. Okay. So this shows that, okay, I took the original geometry and now I did the warpage analysis and it is showing a like a shrinkage value uh, of 1.7. What does this shrinkage value is it? Uh, it is something that I should be expanding my part to achieve that 100 mm, okay? So when I try to apply this same shrinkage compensation as it showed in the earlier that it needs like 1.75, and I went and applied that 1.75 very precisely. And you can see that I'm getting exact dimensions that before deformation and after deformations that 100 mm. So that it means that it's working. I mean to say, this is what it needs to be expanded for, for, for that. And uh, so what does it mean? And how do I use it? The design and shrink compensation of are useful for the trends and overall directions, but the values be up by the shrink values, uh, which is only a, like a small percentage, but can add up to the on large parts. Okay, 
and design with the shrinkage compensation on will remove the shrinkage and gives a pure warp view. So we are segregating the shrink and the warp. And the value should be closest to the actual measure value as long as the shrink compensation value are similar to the expansion values used at the tool shop. So make sure that you use the same thing that you, you know, in the, in the expansion of the tool in the actual reality, you're using the same value that you are trying to uh, see in the simulations to do that correlations. So with that, pretty much to give you an understanding on the what is a shrinkage that we measure without applying means initially when you have a shrink compensation off and then with the shrink compensation on. Okay, I hope this clears that uh, the difference between the shrink compensation off and on and in next uh, episode, I'll try to expand the part and the tool and re-simulate it again and see what happens to that re-simulated part. Till then time, uh, have a great day ahead and talk to you again soon.